tuned to Janet Zenith Cablevision. Thank you for watching. It's time for talk. Each evening at this time, Monday through Friday, Rosemary interviews local personalities and others who bring items of interest to this community. Time for Talk is a community betterment service designed to cooperate with our local community betterment program. Tonight, Rosemary takes us by means of portable camera out of our studios and maybe into your neighborhood. And now, it's time for Talk. We've been looking back over some of the uh, films that we made in 1978 and 1979, and uh, we've uh, several of them have been rather humorous to us. Uh, we did uh, a couple of spoofs in those years that we thought you might be interested in, and let me show you a little bit of the uh, first gentleman. I'm not going to tell you who he was. Just see if you recognize him. Tonight we have as our very special guest a gentleman who claims that he can tell us that. He is an astrologer, and uh, of course astrology is big business now. Uh, this is Professor Ellsworth P. Gerber, who is a renowned professor in astrology, and he uh, can look at the position of the stars and read a person's character completely. And uh, we're going to have him come on and talk with us about what things may be in store for all of us. Professor Gerber. Professor, Professor Gerber, Professor Gerber, we're on, we're on, we're on. Um, <clears throat> uh, are, we, are we rolling yet on the tape? Yes, yes, yes. Um, we're, we're talking about the stars, <clears throat> and uh, you're, you're uh, plotting people's lives and knowing what they're going to do by the stars. Uh, are we? Yes, oh, yeah, yes, we are. Yes. Astrology, yeah, I got you, Rosebud. Uh, the Rosebud before we didn't Rose, have time to talk. Rosemary, Rosemary, Rosemary. Rosemary. Yeah. Uh, Your mother didn't like you very much, did she? <laughs> what, did, what did we say? I missed the beginning yes. of the program. Now, what we're doing is maybe you need to tell them where you are working now, presently. Well, <laughs> I was recently working at um, a college up to the north of us, Puxico Institute of Technology. Puxico Institute of... Uh, There's uh, two campuses. The kids call it the pits. <laughs> well... It's not funny, Rosemary. <laughs> Rosemary? What the professor there... Did you recognize that guest? Did you give up? Well, let me give you another clue. Watch this that was filmed uh, even earlier, and uh, I think maybe this will help you also. We are right now in a discussion about, uh, with Arnold Claus, ab about uh, Santa Claus, he's Santa's brother. We are talking specifically at this point about reindeer. Let's watch. Come out and pet him and, like that. and and so they're stationed permanently in Greenland. And yeah. Now uh, we had a little trouble with Rudolph. Of course, I guess. Well, I, do you still use do you use Rudolph if the night's bad? We did it, but uh, just before I left, we had pretty much of a crisis uh, with Rudolph. Uh, we didn't know, you know. We got it worked out. He uh, was picking his nose and almost electrocuted himself. <laughs> And, well, it was no laughing matter at the time, I'll assure you. We had people in the stable there uh, were just frantic, and uh, you know, it's, it's all systems go now, though, and we'll off with you. All right, that's good to know. It's good to know that he's going to be back and didn't electrocute himself. Uh, we well, certainly want to thank... Um, uh, one of your crew. Rudolph did what? Yeah, there's a little shovel hanging around the side of... Listen, I've got to go. Uh, yes, uh, and we've been talking tonight with Arnold Claus. Scoop it up. This is uh, Santa's brother, and uh, they, the public relations office sent him out, and um, we've had a few problems here, too, but uh, we certainly appreciate your coming out and being our hey, guest tonight. thank you very much, Rose, bud. Did you guess who it was that time? All right, we, we thought you would enjoy that tape. Now, 1979 was the year of the musical, was the year of Fiddler on the Roof here in Kennett, and uh, we'd like to show you a few excerpts of that. First, let's come on looking at the five daughters as they do their scene in The uh, Matchmaker, and then we'll go right into the, to the uh, gentleman who was really the star of the show and who stole the whole thing, David Wheeler, a boy with exceptional talents. Let's look at both of these things. Bring me a ring for I'm longing to be me. 
other shows and this one. Compare them, if you would. Uh, this is the hardest, the easiest? Probably as far as uh, the shows go that I've done before, this is probably the hardest show that I've ever done as far as it's technically hard and uh, it demands a lot from the whole cast and uh, it's a very strenuous show to do. All right, Golda, what about the, how many plays have you been in? One. <laughs> this is my first. All right, and you have a, a principal part. Have you, has it been fun? Has it been hard work? How would you uh, classify this? It's been both. For me, it's been a lot of hard work, and, but I've learned a lot out of it. All right, that's excellent. Now, you all are going to uh, go right into, uh, um, um, what's the title of the song you're going to do for Do us? You Love Me. Do you love me? All right, that sounds lovely. Um, it sounds kind of late for that, though, with these five girls standing up. What, uh, um, what prompts the song? Well, uh, one of my daughters, my second daughter, decides that uh, she's going to go against the tradition of the father choosing her husband. She chooses her own husband. And so the father, after who I play, after contemplation, he decides that, well, He'll go ahead and let her do this because he, she really loves him. But this has always gone against Jewish tradition. And uh, so he sings this song to Golda, Tevia does, and asks her, well, you know, we've been together all these years, but our marriage was arranged. And so now, after all these years, do you love me? Have you grown to uh -huh. love me? Uh-huh. Okay. All right. You're going to enjoy this. Watch just a moment. We had Wanda Teal, and her show aroused, I suppose, maybe as much or more comment than any show we had on in the past uh, several months. Uh, she was talking with us in these days of inflation about how to save money on our food purchases, and um, I had lots of calls, and she had lots of calls. Let's show you uh, a little bit of what she talked about. And if you watched our program last night, you know we've been talking about how to save money, how to buy, um, uh, how to feed a family of four for $25 a week. And if that sounded good to you, I know you tuned in again tonight to find out about this. I am holding a cash register receipt that our guest brought in. Our guest is Wanda Teal. She is a housewife here in Kenneth and uh, uh, has brought in all these things to share her secrets with us to, to let us know how to lower our food bill. This cash register receipt totaled at which was the 28th of February, which is not that long ago. It was ago. yesterday, not before yesterday. $122.61 total. And what did you pay for this $122? 
thirty-eight dollars and eighty-three cents. Right. Now, seeing is believing. <laughs> this is this is the proof. This cash register receipt of one hundred and twenty-two dollars and sixty-one cents for thirty-eight dollars and eighty-three cents, and we've got the lady that can tell us how to do it. Uh, she talked with us on yesterday's uh, on last night's show about. Uh, how to save coupons, where to find them in the Sunday papers, in magazines, uh, how to take them in and take advantage of uh, cash off, as the, the, you call the, the ones you clip out the cash off, off um, and then to mail them in. And Wanda, at the conclusion of uh, last night's show, you were showing me this money maker bulletin. Now explain this a little more in detail to me. Okay, this is right. Those are the ones that I will probably send off for or already have. The, the form. All right, this uh, Cool Whip and Jello coupon, and I see uh, boxes of Jello uh, uh, back there. What uh, what about anything particular to tell us about these? Okay, the Jello I got on sale. They were six for a dollar. I had a cash off on them, which I don't remember now at the time how much they were, but I do remember I paid. By the time I got my refund back, I had paid like one and three four cents less than two cents a box on this and you can see I've already took the front of it off. They have a lot of surprise boxes of jello. They don't No, no, it tells <laughs> on the ends what it is. <laughs> All right. Um, so this was Blackberry. But this had something you need to, needed to send it had the picture of uh, your jello. A moment or two ago we looked at some scenes from the play. But let us show you a young lady that we had on one of our tapes who was uh, an outstanding uh, a uh, seamstress evidently selected from among 120 county winners and let's let you look at Janice Lagore right now. Uh, Janice Lagore and uh, she says that sportswear is a must in today's fashion. Janice Lagore is wearing for any sporty occasion in her three-piece 100% cotton outfit. The bias skirt has side pockets and a black welt ruffle at the bottom gives the effect of an overskirt. The back eyelet blouse has long sleeves and can be rolled up and secured with tabs. The quilted vest has welt, welt pockets and a bias drawstring in the back. Janice has chosen to complement her outfit by wearing a hat trimmed with a black eyelet band. And we're still looking at school activities and let us show you a little bit of what the girls track team was doing in 1979. event. You have somebody with a broken eye. Right. Who's that? This is Lisa Wilkerson. She broke her eye about two days before the invitational. And ran anyway. And ran anyway. She did a oh, good we're, job just being there. This is the Kennedy Invitational that you're seeing. And it was on the 30th of April. Just the girls' Kennedy Invitational. All uh, right. Now the girl who's here. Is that Cheryl Crow? This is Cheryl, Cheryl Crow. Crow. That's the preliminaries of the hurdles. The 80 yard low hurdles. This oh. is preliminaries of the 100 yard dash. <laughs> All right. Uh, who? Karen Masterson. Karen Masterson. Masterson. Uh -huh. And this is Merle S. Jefferson in this heat of the 100 yard dash. What you're seeing now is the mile run. And from Kennett, Fran Dalton and Julie Hyde are in this. Fran's up there in second place, I think, right now. Now, this mile's going to be four times around the track. And each time they came by, they, they looked a little tired. They get a little tired each time. Oh, four that's, times around. That's quite a ways. Now, first in this event was a, tam was a tally girl from Jackson. And the finish here is really super. Fran and a young lady from Papa Bluff. Here it is. All right, Fran was third. This and is came on okay, just, right? a, just a hair. Behind. Right at the finish, right. Fran was third there. I thought this now, was see the good sportsmanship. There you go. And here comes Julie Hyde. 